In nightclubs, in order to impress the ladies, I used to break into my special catwalk move. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope this is uh. true. Um, <laughs> Lee's Be team. Before we, you know we're going to ask you to demonstrate it. Before you do, can we just clarify? You mean like a model, or were you on all fours and weeing? <laughs> And walking at the same time. No, like a model, like a model. OK, well, could you demonstrate for us now? Well, no, that'd be, that'd be ridiculous. Uh, no, no, that's because, why I'm asking. Yeah. No, because if I, if I showed you yeah. a, a, that I did a very good catwalk move, yeah. then obviously I'm telling the truth. But Not necessarily. You could do... be lying, but you are able to do it. You could say, when I used to go to nightclubs, I would occasionally stand on one leg. And if I said demonstrate, you'd go, no, because if, if I stand on one leg, it'll prove I can do it. And I'd go, no, <laughs> proves you can stand on one leg. It didn't prove that you used to do it in nightclubs. So <laughs> I, I ask you again. Get yourself on the floor. Start walking. This move, this move is so good that <laughs> if I were to show I could do it, you'd yeah. be going, well, obviously you'd, you'd play that card in a nightclub. Uh, Just imagine we're in a nightclub now, nightclub setting. Yeah. I'm single, I'm well up for it, I'm from Essex. I'll take this. <laughs> <laughs> Will you compromise? Will you do the face? Yeah, do you do a model face? Like, do you pout? It's more about the swivel of the face than the face itself. Right. The, uh, the swivel, swivel of, of the face? face. Wow. Of How the do you face. swivel oh. your face? It's very difficult. I get to swivel it's... my face. Really? So, I mean, that's swivelling it, isn't it? No. That's surely <laughs> swivelling your head. That's it's bad. Swivelling, that's bad. So, so your face swivels when you swivel your no, head. No, no, no. The no, head's no, the no, thing no, your no, face no, is no. on. Your head does need to stay still yeah. while the face moves yeah, yeah. if you're going to do it. No, so. I, don't, I don't. I think you can swivel things with the use oh. of things that the things are attached to. <laughs> I can move my eyes, seriously, right to the back of my head. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> no. There you go. No, 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 yes, yes, anyway, no, yes, no, yes, no, wait, 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 yes, swivel your face in relation to other bits of your head. <laughs> I'm swiveling it in relation to the rest of the universe. <laughs> Dara, really, within the rules of the game, I think it would be right for you mm. to show us this move. Dara, I'm going to help you here, oh, no, OK? No, no, no. Here, yes, no, I no. am. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you a little bit of music so you've got something to work with. Oh, inspiration. Now, I don't know if we've got anything ready, but hit it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, stop. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Wait, 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 This is the catwalk area here, right? Right? Yeah. However, first the model walks out to the start of the walk, right? So I'm slightly backstage here. I'm nervous, I'm ready to go, right? This will be the catwalk area here. When I hit the bend, watch for the swivel, right? Dara? <laughs> Dara, was this boring bit part of the chatter? Oh, man. <laughs> 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 you didn't have to explain it all before you did it, but what you, what you were about, what she was about the to see. Ladies. Did you have the confidence in the nightclub to go? <laughs> get the music! I'm not ready, cut the music! <laughs> Everyone, stop having fun! I'm not ready! <laughs> OK, music. Yeah. Very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> the swivel? Did you really see the good. swivel? Oh. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. The swivel, the swivel of your head rather yeah. than your face. <laughs> what, what you're asking for <laughs> would require surgery. <laughs> That's what the women used to say when he used to chat. <laughs> right. Lee, what's it going to be? Truth or lie? What do we think? Do well, I think. Would that I have think... done anything for you in a nightclub? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> Ten years ago, It'd have made more me hair, laugh. thinner, you know. I'd I'm have not, laughed. I'm not letting me fight and wait here, right? Oh uh, <laughs> definitely wasn't the first time he's done that move. He's, he's definitely he's de pulled that move off before. He's, he's definitely done, done that move too much before. Confidence. Do you think so? Mm, too okay. much confidence. Do you think it's the truth, then? But he hasn't necessarily done it for the reasons he's saying he's done it. Men are so indecisive. Let's just go with the truth. I'm not sure about that. Let's go with the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, what's it going to be? Come on. Um, um... <laughs> Should we go for the, we go for we'll a... go for the truth? Oh, Let's God. go for a truth. <laughs> right, they're saying it's the truth. Dara O'Brien, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is true. Yay! Yay! Wow. 
Wowza. Come on! Yes, it's true. Uh, Dara used to break into a special catwalk move to impress the ladies in nightclubs. A mistake I made in France meant someone in England got hospitalised. Please, team. Have you just learned to read? <laughs> <laughs> What was the mistake you made in the French language? Yeah. It's a simple question, Rob. Yeah. Was it in the French language? Was it in the language of right. Brit? The it's French. a simple the... question with a simple answer. Right. Yes, it Can was. Can you tell Me. us the mistake yes. you made, please? <laughs> the mistake I made got somebody hospitalised. That's the... <laughs> that was the... I didn't <laughs> say... I didn't say... No, no, no. That's not worthy of a fact. What was the mistake? What was the mistake? say? Lee, I'll take it from you. What was the nature of this mistake? It was a language thing. It was a French-English mix-up. It was a mix-up, a terrible mix-up, a terrible mix-up language mix-up. What were you doing terrible. in France? I was, uh, I was on the phone. <laughs> I, was, I was in France, I was working in France, and I was on working the phone. Working in France. I was on the phone to England, and I made a mistake with my French-English translation. Who, who received the mistake? Uh, a girl, a, a girl. What was her name? Anne. What colour hair does she have? I don't know, she was on the phone. <laughs> So, can you talk us through the incident? I was asked by someone in France, they said, can you talk to somebody in England? Why did they ask you to do that? Because... <laughs> they didn't speak English. Right. What was the relationship between Anne and the person that had asked you to talk? Oh, that was Anne's father said, can you speak to Anne? She's in England, and we're Wait. in France. And ask her what's wrong with her. How did you know him? What How was the relationship? How did you know him? There's a new angle. Oh, I knew him. Well, you should have asked. I knew him because, uh... <laughs> I worked in a, in France. I was in a school. I worked in a school. He was the caretaker. What were you doing in, in school? I was uh, teaching English. Now, his daughter, she's French. Yes. She's living in England. Yeah. Now. No, no, she wasn't living. She was on a, a very short exchange. Thing. Right. Now, in the words of Question of Sport, what happened next? <laughs> he came to me. He said, "Can you talk to my daughter? And she's ill. She's in England. She, she, she couldn't speak to the family she was with. That's the problem. That's so, the problem. So she didn't know how to speak to the family. She couldn't speak to the family. How the family was you was speaking English. to her going to help that? Well, right, here's the situation. <laughs> Anne could talk to her dad and tell her what was wrong with her in French, but he couldn't say that to the family because they didn't speak French and he didn't speak English. So right. he came to me, who spoke both languages. I went to her, I spoke to her in French, <laughs> then I passed it on to the family in English. What's wrong with them? I passed that on to him in English, then I passed it back to him in French. Everyone's happy. Now, let me have... she got... <laughs> That's fine. You said that you made a mistake that caused this person to be hospitalised. That's right, I did, yeah. What did you do wrong? What did what you did say you do, wrong? Yeah. I said, kiss, kiss, burst, kiss, kiss, burst, kiss, kiss, burst, all that, you know, as yeah. you do. <laughs> and she said, Was she stuck in the bell tower? <laughs> <laughs> I know what's wrong with her. Is this someone sitting with her back? <laughs> And what is that? What does that mean? Well, I said, I got the, the English family on the phone and I said, hey, she's got an angina. She's got angina. <laughs> and that's a mistake, right? Well, angina, I found out later, is a serious heart condition, so right. she was hospitalised. But what, what was wrong angina with Angina is a sore throat. I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> <laughs> And what happened? Did they then rush her to this they, hospital? They called 999 and, and got her into hospital, yeah. Nuff, nuff, nuff. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, Lee, what are you thinking? Could well, it be true? That I don't think Anne is a French name. That's the one bit in it that I don't believe. Anne-Marie? Is she? Don't know. <laughs> 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 That's one of the funniest things anybody's ever said. <laughs> I believe it to be true. You believe it to be true? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was so torturous getting that story out that it has to be the truth. Yeah. Lee, you I, think so too? It could not be any truer. <laughs> Rod, truth or lie? Of course, it is <laughs> true. <laughs> Travelling around Europe, my friend and I came up with a scheme to make money on the beach. <laughs> Please, team. What was it? It was, um, it was jewellery. We used to sell jewellery. What kind of jewellery was it? It was earrings. And where did you get the earrings from? Um... <laughs> 
to be perfectly honest, we'd make them. Oh, it's homemade jewelry. Here we go. Um, wh where was the beach? Where, where was the beach? <laughs> it's right next to the sea. <laughs> in Greece. What was it about being on that beach? You thought, earrings. Um... <laughs> I couldn't make donuts. <laughs> what did you make the earrings out of? Well, I, I didn't make them. My, my friend made them. And what do you make them out of? <laughs> Beads. <laughs> now, this friend, Sean, what was his name? Spud. 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 Yeah. Was his name. Spud the Jew. <laughs> but um, my job was to sell them. Oh, ah, so them. you're the salesman. So, so give us a bit of pad. Imagine David is he's on the beach in his thong, he's relaxing. <laughs> Finally, he can be himself, okay? okay? And you come along and you look at his ears, they're unadorned, you think yeah. there's an opportunity. <laughs> Off you go. Well, the first thing, if he's got a thong on, I'll ask him to turn over. <laughs> Can you roll onto your back, please? <laughs> <laughs> and would you like me to rub a bit of cream into that area? Because I don't think that's ever seen the sunshine. <laughs> he wasn't the target market, yeah. isn't it? Well, would you like to make the jewellery? You like, I like the jewellery around the neck to so sell them to Richard? Are you having a nice time? Yeah, I'm having a lovely time. Do you want to buy some earrings? Not really, no. <laughs> What's All wrong right, with me? <laughs> I've right. turned over and everything. <laughs> What was Spud's real name? Keith. <laughs> Why did you call him Spud? He always had a jacket on. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? Judy, do we think that's truth or a lie? I think, I think it's a lie. You don't, I not... can't see him selling beaded earrings on a beach. Would you buy anything from him? No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to go? I think, I think Judy's right. You think it's a lie? Yeah. I'm going to go with the team. You're going to say lie, Sean. Truth or lie? True! Oh. <laughs> yes, it's true. Sean did used to sell earrings on the beach. As a child, I once secretly cashed my mum's family allowance and used the money to buy a cat. <laughs> David's team. Mm. So, uh, how did you perpetrate this fraud? A lot of, lot of strong allegations straight away. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not a fraud. Is it not a I fraud? Didn't, I didn't say I was my mum. Right. <laughs> my mum, single mother at work, so quite often couldn't get to the post office during opening hours, so I, my job was to get the family allowance on the eldest. Right. And how yeah. old were you? Um, 11? Ah, I see. So you were permitted to collect oh, okay. the money. Yes, yes. What you weren't then authorised to do by your mother is to spend it on a cat. N not, not explicitly. So it's not, not fraud. It's theft. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened then, Sarah? Talk us through it. So I went to the post office. Yes. Got the family allowance. Yes. Um, quite near the post office, there was lots of different shops. A high street, yes. if you will. <laughs> Oddly, on the way to go to the post office, I had popped into the pet shop and um, there were um, two little kittens oh. and they were kind of all snuggled and, and sleepy. Oh, oh. Very sweet, very oh. sweet. So I went to the post office, got the money, it was about £30, and then on the way back, one of the cats had been sold and the other one was there, very lonely. Oh. Is this the story you told your mum, or is this the truth? <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is, we don't yeah. find that out till the end of the round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting old, I keep forgetting the format. <laughs> he was meowing, he was sad, and I realised that I now was holding enough money to buy him, and so I did. How, how did you tell your mum? Um, I told my mum that I'd gone to the post office as instructed, picked up the family allowance, but then when I um, had been walking home, it had been very windy, the money had flown away. When I was looking for the money, in the grass, I found this kitten. <laughs> did she fall for that? No. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, if she did, can we get her on that team? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what happened? Were you allowed to keep the cat? Well, for a very, very short amount of time, the cat was in our house, um, but my uh, mum was looking for somewhere else, to basically to, to give him away to a home where he would be properly cared for, and then she told me that he had blown away. <laughs> You were only 11 and she went, oh, where's the cat? <laughs> he blew away. 
<laughs> Eleven is not too young to learn the bitter <laughs> lesson <laughs> of how miserable life is. <laughs> Can I just say this has completely ruined my card in a minute, where I will be reading out that I, in the 1990s, bought a cat off a woman in a pub for 15 quid. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola, does, does this story strike you I as true? I think there's a lot of detail in it. A lot yes, of detail, yeah, yes. Yeah. You can picture the high street, the pet shop, mm. the post office. I'm, yes, you've I'm... got a wonderful imagination. <laughs> though, <haven't> you? <laughs> you, you're very gifted in that yeah, way, yeah. aren't you? Well, I mean, we're talking about cats here. Yeah, we there are no cats. No, and yet <laughs> we vaguely know what we're banging on about. <laughs> you brought cats to life as vividly as Andrew Lloyd Webber did yeah. all those years ago. <laughs> I never saw the live show, I just saw the, the clip from the film. I auditioned <laughs> for that film and didn't get it. <laughs> uh, and you know who played the part I went up for? Who? Judy Dench. <laughs> how, how dare you! <laughs> uh, the Ray Winston. Ray Winston wow. got the part. Uh, Dan, what are you thinking? I feel like I, I want to believe Sarah on this one. I feel there's an element of truth there. Well, I think the situation is we just completely believe this. Now, yes. if it's a lie, there's something diabolical <laughs> that Sarah has done, because we've just totally accepted it. Oh, right. <laughs> and can I just say, I'm enjoying the length of your shirt sleeves tonight. Oh, they're getting longer and longer. You look like, you look like Lawrence Llewellyn yes. Bowen. <laughs> Sarah, they're saying it's true. Was it true, or were you telling a lie? Track oh. Oh. Yes, it's true. Sarah really did use her mum's family allowance to buy a cat. <coughs> it, oh, it's me. Right. <laughs> I was recently bounced off a bouncy castle whilst trying to prevent a bouncident. <laughs> What's a bouncident? It's an incident. <laughs> Involving a bounce, and you put the two together to create bounce. bounce sure, so it's, it's a derivative of accident, not incident. Well, obviously, an accident is an incident, oh. and a bounce -ident is an incident. Was this bounce -ident an accident? <laughs> <laughs> it was a bounce -ident waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> How did you go about preventing the bounce -ident? Yeah. That might or might not have happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell you everything. <laughs> let, me, let me set the scene for you. Uh. It's early summer. Um, it was the birthday party of a small child. Was you invited or just turned up? Uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> look, look let, let's, let's be clear. There's a children's party in a church hall. Yeah. I'm yeah. attending because it's the party of my... Nephew, yeah, and there's a bouncy castle. Whoa, well, whoa! Well, in the church hall. I know, I've never indoors. Yes, yes. An indoor bouncy castle. Indoors. Yes. How no, big was there it? wasn't. No, there. Wasn't. How did they get it in the door? <laughs> that's, a, they, that's a fire well, hazard. That's a... I'm not an idiot. <laughs> How did they get it in the door? <laughs> We've got him. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> church hall is that where the service is being held? No. This no, is no, the adjacent. This is the church hall was our prime minister during oh. the war. <laughs> 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 Now, I don't like bouncy castles, because I, I think they're dangerous. Right. And my little boy went on after I had expressly told him not to. Well, he oh. disobeyed your orders. <laughs> <laughs> the worst father I've ever... The most incompetent father I've ever... <laughs> well, I don't like to say, but I think the boy's better off in care. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is very upsetting. <laughs> he clambered on, unbeknownst to me. Yeah. And he's going back and forth. So I get on and I get my little boy, yeah. uh, George, who is, who is not even two, yeah. and I pick him up. All right. OK? And I'm trying now to hold my little boy yeah. whilst being bounced <laughs> by these evil children. <laughs> my wife is stood on terra firma. And as I'm coming off the bouncy castle, a particularly hefty child <laughs> bounces, sending me up, <laughs> holding my son. I hurtle through the air. Luckily, I come to my feet like Spider-Man, but the impetus is too much. 
I surge forward and headbutt my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thus having the bounce incident that I was trying to avoid. <laughs> so, what are you going to say, Lee? What do we think? Yes, I think it's true. Do you true. think it's true? If a two-year-old had clambered on, you might well go and get your two-year-old off. I think that's true. Well, then I must say true. You say true, David Singh? Yes. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie, yeah. you say it's true. Well, it's actually true. Attention <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Yes, it's true. I was recently bounced off a bouncy castle while trying to prevent a bounce incident. When I was a teacher, whilst trying to explain a tricky concept, I accidentally locked a pupil in a cupboard. <laughs> David's team. OK. What, what was the concept? Was it the concept of imprisonment? Or... <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a maths lesson. Um, I was teaching the topic of probability and <laughs> chance. What's the chances of getting locked in the cupboard? <laughs> well, that, was a, that became an extra, an extra learning objective. Um, <laughs> that, that, wasn't, that wasn't the main one. I was trying to get across the idea of... Um... Narnia. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get them to understand how to explain the concept of probability. So uh, the idea was that if you had like an alien arrive on Earth, how would you explain probability? Which would be the first thing you'd do, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, it, it, put it, the it, laser it, down. <laughs> let me talk to you about maths. Yeah. <laughs> Ramesh, what age group was this? So this is year eight. So okay. 11, 12 years old. So um, what happened was is I needed somebody to pretend to be an alien. OK. So I selected a child mm. from the class. I didn't just go out yeah. and look for one. <laughs> uh, How did you select? Did you go for the little green one with the pointy ears? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, actually, what it was is I thought I was doing a good thing because, you know, you get some kids that are sort of... Um, that have problems making friendships and stuff like that. And I had a kid like that in the class, so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd bring him out of himself. You chose the kid that got bullied <laughs> to be the alien. <laughs> so the rest of the cars can point at him and go, alien. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I thought we were just playing a game. I didn't realise it's an Ofsted inspection. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically what it was, I was trying to make it realistic. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So I said to him, why don't we pretend this cupboard is like a transformation chamber? You know, right. you go in the cupboard. Mm. You go in. You go in as a boy. Oh, it's just get, it's just getting worse, isn't it? <laughs> One of my kids came home from school and described this scene. I'd be down that school like yeah. a shot. And how surprised would you then be to see that teacher on the BBC a few years later? <laughs> in the current climate, yeah. not surprised no, no. at all. <laughs> Basically, I said to him, you're going to go into the cupboard, you're going to transform into an alien. What was the concept again you were trying to teach the kid? Probability. Probability. Yes. We haven't got to that bit yet. We're going to find out oh, when he steps okay. out. Oh, we're, now we're trying I'm to find out how to transform to an alien oh, right now. That's what we're looking forward to. We're looking forward to him coming out. Okay. We, never, we never get that far, do we? What am I talking about? At the next Ofsted inspection, a small skeleton was discovered. <laughs> um, but... And they said, what are the chances of that? <laughs> and they said, well, <laughs> interesting you should ask that. <laughs> What were you going to do, though? That's what I want to know. Yeah. If he hadn't got locked in, what were you going to do? The idea was is that he was going to come out and, and be the alien, and then I was going to get different kids to... Uh, it, it, I mean... Get, I was get gonna... different kids to... Don't lose confidence. So, oh, <laughs> I was going to get different kids to explain to him what probability was. So he was going to be, like, the dummy alien, and then, like, he'd be like... Boo, boo, boo. And, and, then, and then... Never to be bullied again. <laughs> No, I can't help feeling that I'm a little bit under attack here. And, and... <laughs> it's all right, because you may be lying, in which yeah. case you're off the hook. Um... <laughs> what, why does it help to understand probability, to get children to explain it to an so, alien? So, so basically, in, in order to, to get the idea that a kid understands a concept, them explaining it and that explanation being clear illustrates that they have learnt it completely. So, so Ramesh, you've sort of left it that he's in the cupboard. What, he, he got in. Yeah. What happened? I realised I couldn't open the door uh, to let him out. 
So I sort of started looking around for other teachers to help me. And they said, actually, the cupboard, it can be opened from the inside. The problem came when I said to him, you're going to have to come out the cupboard, uh, just open it from the inside. And he replied... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because he was being an alien. Right. So, yeah. That extended the problem. <laughs> and he was in there for 20 minutes. <laughs> so he came out in the end, he eventually opened it, he came out and... Well, the lesson was ruined. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. What are you thinking, David? I do know that Ramos used to be a maths teacher. Oh, OK. Right. So, and that, yeah. you know, education's loss was show business's gain. <laughs> So many gaps in the story, I just... Yeah, the story wasn't really adding up, right? Uh, yeah. Well, a maths teacher, I like it. I think we think it's a lie, yeah, do we? I think it might yeah. be. We're it's a lie for lie. all of you. OK. Uh, Ramesh. Truth or lie? The story is, uh, true. <laughs> Ramesh did accidentally <laughs> lock one of his pupils in a cupboard. It's Sarah Millican. Possession. Ah, there's a box under your desk. Would you pop it on the desk? And then, first of all, read out the card that's inside before you show us what the possession is. This is my cat cam. I put it around my cat's neck for a week to film what I'd got up to because I believed it was him who kept turning the kitchen tap on. <laughs> OK, let's take this item out and pop it on the desk. Right, Lee's team, cat cam. So you're saying that the, you thought the cat might be turning the tap on? Yes. Well, we know it wasn't John. <laughs> <laughs> so you put the cat cam on the cat for yes. how long? For, well, generally, like, an hour at a time. But while I was out. So the cat's clever enough not to be turning this tap on when you're in? <laughs> well, yeah, because I would just see him doing it and then I would know it was him. If he could do the tap, were you not worried that he could turn the camera off? <laughs> <laughs> no, because the, the tap's, like, one of those ones where that's quite fiddly. Uh, and how do you see the picture? You connect it to a computer? Yeah, it's Is there just a got USB a USB on there? thing, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see, OK. You attach it to the computer. Mm -hmm. And how long are you watching? An hour at a time? Well, you, you fast-forward it. I'm not sitting watching... Oh, just watching. the highlights. You're doing the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, Go on, the big question and, and is... Was it the cat? Um, not so far, but I'm still... It's still Somebody's sort of turning the taps on when you go out of the house. It's kind of a work in progress. <laughs> so when, you, when you come back... I hope he's not watching, cos... Yeah. Don't <laughs> <then they're... laughs> worry, he's <laughs> turned <laughs> this off. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Very... Just... Mm. Yes. Why didn't you attach the camera to the tap? Oh... <laughs> What's the name of your cat, Sarah? It's called Chief Brody. And, and the personality, is he a scratcher? He is a scratcher. On bits of on furniture? Arms. Or, yeah. Or... Well, that's not so much of a worry. It's the furniture is more the thing, isn't it? Is it? Thanks. <laughs> Can I ask why you're so worried about the cat turning the taps on when you've got something in your house that's attacking you? I wouldn't mind well, if it's turning the tap on if it's scratching my face. Well, that's because you're not a cat lover. No, but I don't like things that scratch. Well, don't get a cat, then. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the weirdo here? Yes. Yeah. 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 We have a show of hands. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so lovely to hear, cos usually it's me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what colour is your cat, Sarah? Ginger. Hmm, pink colour, ginger cat. <laughs> oh. Would you? It's red, it's not Would pink. Would it pink? Oh. It's red. Oh, please, it's pink. It's Tell red, shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> Red and ginger, devil's finger. <laughs> what? That's what they're saying. <laughs> Who? No, they say? Who says that? No one says that. They part. do. Is that what you mean? And they're yeah. still saying it. So what do you think, Lee? Is she telling the truth? What do we think, Bob? I'm saying it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. David's saying it's possibly true. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll lie. OK, you're saying lie. Sarah, truth or lie? It is a lie. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Sarah didn't put a cat cam on her cat. 
I once found a steak pie down my trousers. <laughs> David's team. No further questions. <laughs> was it hot or cold? Uh, uh, by the time I found it, it was body temperature. You know, it had it just <laughs> air. From which direction had it reached body temperature? Uh, from piping hot downwards no, or I, from cold upwards? I think it was. I think it had gone from room temperature to my body temperature. I was actually sitting <laughs> on the tube. And I realised that there was a steak pie <laughs> which, uh, in, which, my, in my trousers. Which line were you on? Actually, you know, it, was, it wasn't the London tube, it was the, uh, the Glasgow Underground, actually. More oh, specifically. Okay. So you're sitting there. Yeah. Uh, what time of day is it? It's, uh, it was morning. I was on my way home and I felt uncomfortable and I put my hand down the So it's of... early morning, you're on my way home from some sort of party? I, or... I was a student and were I think you... that answers all of the questions. Were you drunk? <laughs> I was not drunk at the time, just because I was in Glasgow. No. Um, I no, because you're time. Irish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that takes the curse off it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I surmise what had happened was I had fallen asleep at a, in someone else's living room and somebody thought it would be funny to put a steak pie, not just in my trousers, actually in my... Pants. It was in your pants. Yes. Was it at the front, <laughs> back, it was or the side? I would say what has happened is I've fallen asleep face down and it has been shoved down the back. It was down the down the But back. I tell you, whoever it was made an effort. They they pushed it. It was it had become it was down in the gusset. Yeah. <laughs> in fairness, I don't think they were really my friends. I sort of inveigled my way back into somebody's house that without really having been invited. You know, somebody was a group of people going back. And I think I wasn't entirely a welcome addition to the evening. So you wake up in the flat. Yes. You've been asleep face down. Yes. So you've not yet felt the effects of the pie. That's right. You stand up. Yes. Still you don't, not aware of it. You don't feel that there's something extra. <laughs> no. Uh, You're talking about a man. <laughs> talking about a man who's already carrying quite a lot of weight down there. Right. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's only added maybe two, three percent to the general wealth yes. of matter. Yes. <laughs> and then you walk. Too much. You <laughs> from this flat to this underground station. Yeah. Yeah. You don't notice on that wall <laughs> no. that there's something no. not I may part well. of you. For all I know, I, thought I have been shedding pie crust <laughs> like <laughs> something from the Great Escape. <laughs> Wasn't it smelling? Were you not like walking along constantly going, there's a Greg's everywhere around here? <laughs> <laughs> so then you get on the train. What point do you well, notice the pie? You know, it's only a five minute, eight minute journey then to my stop. So yeah. at some point there, while well, it's only then while well, sitting at down. At some point? It's <laughs> not the moment you sat down <laughs> no, on a pie. No, it definitely That was. wasn't the time. No. It just, you gradually became aware. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't like, believe that. I was in, you've got a pie in your pants. <laughs> David, even if you don't believe it, you don't need to be angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're all, we're I'm all... trying to break it. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of pants were you wearing? If that's not too sexy a question. <laughs> I don't want to sound like I, I'm making things up, but I don't remember exactly what... You don't remember what pants, pants. you found a pie in. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a mental image that stayed with you. Well, I the, was, the, the I type of pants, the pants from which the pie emerged. No, because I didn't. would remember that. They didn't emerge. I was sitting on the on the underground, and I went, and I just sort of, <laughs> I put my hand down. And oh, can you imagine the face of the person opposite? <laughs> <laughs> Especially on me. I started eating it. Yeah. <laughs> So what are you going to say, David? Which way? Well, well, I think it's full of plausible detail, such as they didn't want you at the party. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's true that All he right. did have a pie in his okay, pants. OK, Ed, was it the truth or were you telling us a lie? To my eternal shame, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm afraid that was true. Uh, Ed did once find a steak pie down his trousers. After just one lesson, I had to give up learning the guitar because I found my teacher too good-looking. <laughs> David Steele. Um, how old were you when you had these lessons? Uh, 30... <laughs> <laughs> Something? It was about... It was, I'd say it was three years ago. It's well known you can't learn anything after the age of 27. That's it. Whatever you can do when you're 27, that's what you do. <laughs> Forget anything else. 
How is parenting going, Dave? <laughs> Was it a man or a woman, your teacher? Uh, <laughs> which is funnier. It was a man. <laughs> and were you attracted to him or you just found him objectively so good-looking that you thought this is intimidating? Uh, I am recently married. This is a threat to me. <laughs> my wife booked me some lessons as a gift. He came to my house. I felt he was too good-looking to exist in my house. <laughs> and I simply never phoned him about the second Paint lesson. a picture for us of this man. Maybe using Lee as a, as a base point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you can picture almost the opposite. <laughs> there's, no, there's no need to go that far, John. <laughs> he arrived on a bicycle. That upset me. <laughs> um, sweating. Guitar on his back. He was Spanish. That upset me. <laughs> um, very ahead of my time there, Brexit-wise. Um, <laughs> this was before the vote. In fact, I actually organised the vote as a way of getting him out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> Said something like, yeah. ''Can I bring my bike into the house?'' <laughs> I mean, I was all a quiver. Yeah. <laughs> I think I said, ''You can bring whatever you like, Alberta.'' <laughs> A visual. I want a visual picture. I mean, what... What, what colour were his shorts? eyes? <laughs> uh, have you ever seen a sunset? <laughs> <laughs> was your wife clearly thrilled to see him? She was upstairs, luckily. And why the guitar? Do you, are you into guitar or did she just want you to play guitar? I want to learn the guitar. You don't need to learn an instrument to be in a band, do you, Aston? <laughs> <laughs> You can sell, like, 10 million records without playing a guitar, so you'll be fine. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Is he telling the truth? Ooh. What do you think? Well, I, I did think it was the truth, because I, the little I know of you, you seem like you could be worried enough <laughs> to feel that. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. I'm not sold. So if you could move to True, that would really help me out. <laughs> <laughs> for, you, for, you, right, for you, I'll move, I'll move to True. Oh, under no, pressure. That, that means I don't have to think. <laughs> true. Yeah. Saying True. John. Oh, come on. Truth or lie? It is True. <laughs> it's True. John did stop having guitar lessons because he found his teacher too good looking. I once returned a T-shirt to a shop, furious that it had shrunk in the wash, only to discover, mid-complaint, it was, in fact, my seven-year-old son's. <laughs> David, so what, was, what did the T-shirt look like? It was, uh, it was a small red T-shirt. I'm guessing you had recently bought an adult-sized red T-shirt. And you uh, had put that in the wash. Correct. But I'm presumably also... Your son's My identical son's red T-shirt, red... but purchased at a different time in a different place. I got it from Gap, and he got it from Gap Kids. And I just grabbed it, put it on, thought, oh, it's shrunk. I had no reason to believe it was any... I didn't check the label. That was my T-shirt, as far as I was concerned. So yeah. when you went back into Gap, what did you say? I was in a queue for ages. Someone shouted, next, and so I thought, I'm in the wrong shop. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then I finally found out that it was Gap, so I got to the front of the queue <laughs> and uh, I, I, I went to the counter and I said, I'm not happy. Yes. What did they say? They said, well, which one of the dwarfs are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in you saying that you actually put on mm. your son's T-shirt, which, lest we forget, yes. you said earlier, is something for a seven-year-old child. Well, I didn't want to say it on national television. My son is clinically obese. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you forced my hand, so now I've got to say it, OK? <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> thank you, David. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it, no it's, he's not. He's not clinically obese. I know this is probably not uh, the right way to play this game, and this may seem a little bit like I'm helping the other team, mm. but surely your T-shirt and your son's T-shirt would have shrunk at the same rate. He didn't know his child's T-shirt was shrunk. in there. Yeah. Nothing shrunk. Nothing actually shrunk. <laughs> he didn't know his... Steve, are you following me? Nothing 
nothing shrunk. Nothing shrunk. Nothing shrunk. I've got it's my just his son's t-shirt. T -shirt. Oh, I see. Yes. Oh, I see. So, so there's no shrinkage. No shrinkage is involved. OK. Is <laughs> it following this? So why were you complaining? <laughs> So there you are at the front of the queue and you're talking to the assistant. I handed it over. I said, I'd like to swap this. This T-shirt has shrunk. She looks at the label, which I haven't done. She looks at it and assumes that it's my child's T-shirt that has shrunk. And she said to me, are you sure it's shrunk? To which I said, yes, because I couldn't put it on. <laughs> <laughs> to which she said, well, yes, but could your child put it on? I said, I'm not giving it to my son just because it's shrunk. <laughs> She said, well, if you're sure it's shrunk, then OK, it's shrunk. She went off, she came back, she gave me another T-shirt, exactly the same size. <laughs> and what did you say? I said, well, that has also clearly been in a high wash. <laughs> <laughs> she said, how big are these supposed to be, then? I said, well, they're supposed to fit me. She said, why are they supposed to fit you? I said, because I bought an adult T-shirt. She went, ah! OK, it's time to guess, David. What do you think? Well, we don't need to guess. It's a lie. <laughs> Put us out of our misery. Was it the truth or was it a lie? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Whilst on holiday in South Africa, I had a two-minute conversation with what I thought was my wife, only to discover that a small hippo had wandered into the bedroom. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> what do you make of that? Miles, <laughs> describe your wife to us. <laughs> uh, tall, slender, statuesque. So did the hippo have a very similar voice to your wife? <laughs> uh, the, the hippo was just sort of moving gently around. Uh, and... <laughs> but not for that. <laughs> 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 not, not in especially close proximity. What was the conversation about and how did you go well, two minutes? Well, I'll tell you what the conversation was about. It was about me and I was doing most of the talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> which obviously contributed to my So where, where, in fact, was your wife? Uh, my, I, don't, I don't know where she was. She was just not... <laughs> I was Have in... you ever seen your wife again? <laughs> <laughs> so where were you? I'm, I'm guessing that this is a safari scenario, am I right? Uh, it was sort of on the on the outskirts of Cape Town. Describe the nature of the structure you were in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is it a building? Is it on the fourth floor of a of a? Did okay. the hippo have to get it, in a lift? They're, they're... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's mainly bungalows. The resort is a collection of, of sort of bungalow buildings, largely A-frame wooden buildings with a kind of thatch roof. Why were the doors so big a hippo could get in? Well, it's a, it's a small hippo, isn't it? <laughs> How small is yeah. a small hippo? Like, like a George hippo. from Rainbow, or...? Quite <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, big. So, but... the, the hippo was only that big? Yeah. It's about the size of a, of a Labrador. Well, let's be yeah. clear. Is yeah. that its width or its length? <laughs> uh, that, is its, that is its width, as viewed from behind and, I suspect, from the front. This is worse. Your wife's like the back end of a hippo. <laughs> This A-frame bungalow has how many rooms in it? Uh, it's, got, it's got two rooms. At one end, there's a, a big bathroom, uh, and then there's uh, the rest of it is a very big open-plan bedroom, and it has a sort of seating area in the middle of it, and it has a bed at the far end, a very robust bed. And... Uh... <laughs> a bed you could make love to a hippo on? <laughs> That is speculation, but I wouldn't bet against it. <laughs> oh. Okay, we're in the bungalow. Okay, I'm in the I'm in the uh, the ensuite end. Yes. Okay, and I've been shaving and then <laughs> you know shouting over my shoulder, and I realise after a while I'm not getting a lot back here, and um, I turn round and I saw that I had not been moaning about my career to my wife, but to a baby hippo. <laughs> How long was uh, this baby yeah. hippo? 
Well, I only saw it from the back, but I imagine, statistically, it'd be, what, probably three times as long as it was wide? OK. <laughs> so, 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 broadly, <laughs> so it was a sort of as long as this desk? Nobody measures or, or animals by long. width. What are you, you doing? Oh, I saw a massive snake, it was this big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say? Is he telling the truth? I think, think based on the width, yeah. it's a lie. I think that was a panicked reach for width. <laughs> <laughs> on the basis of the panicked reach for width. <laughs> I think we'll say it's a lie. You're going to say that's a lie. Yeah. OK, yeah. Miles, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is a lie. Oh. <laughs> 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 yes, it's a lie. Miles didn't mistake his wife for a hippo whilst on holiday. I have told my children that every time they lie, a puppy dies somewhere. <laughs> use this line on the children has it actually stopped them from lying well it certainly seems to have done yeah because they do care about puppies yes <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit of a relief actually that you're saying that didn't result in your children telling loads and loads of lies and getting excited <laughs> by the prospect of puppy death <laughs> it's heartening on that level no, but... i don't have sadistic children <laughs> But it's also bad advice, cos what if a dog goes to attack them and they tell a lie and the dog still gets them? <laughs> <laughs> Actually... That's the nearest. <laughs> <laughs> the nearest, <laughs> the nearest, <laughs> nearest <laughs> dog will die. So you just... <laughs> yeah. well, statistically, you'd hope, yeah. by osmosis, the yeah. lie will dog, kill... Essentially, tell the lie, yeah. dog death spreads out from yeah. you till it finds a dog, <laughs> the dog dies, and then the wave of dog death stops. Can I just ask Joe, why a puppy and not a kitten? She's not sick. <laughs> It was a difficult decision to make. It was a toss-up between a kitten, a puppy, and their dad. And <laughs> kind of puppies are the sweetest. What is your verdict? My team say true. You're saying true, yeah? yeah. OK, so, Joe, is it true? It's a lie. Oh. It's a lie. Oh. Greg, you are first. Am I? You are, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For my first term at university, I rented the bathroom in a student house and slept in the bathtub every night. <laughs> Lee, Greg. Yes? Before we even start this, can you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll be no, unless David stands up with me, there'll be no perspective. David? In fact, let's have proper perspective. Connie, can yeah. you stand up? <laughs> You know the question. <laughs> yeah. What's the answer? Uh, well, I just uh, hung off the end of the bath, as I hang off every single bed that I've ever slept in. It's, no, it's no, 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 like no, 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 no. You definitely don't hang off a bath. No. Like you hang <laughs> off a bed. <laughs> because Beds a bed, flat. go like that, and then you hang off. Yeah. The You'd thing... have to go up and cross and hang off. <laughs> the it's thing... all, but you're not a snake, Craig. The thing... <laughs> What actually uh, drove me to change my circumstances was that I was genuinely... I was bruising the side of my uh, cheek regularly by waking up in the morning and clanging into one of the taps. Yeah, Can I ask why on earth you would sleep with your head at the tap end? <laughs> <laughs> that is mad. Yes. Well, you know, I was 18 years of age and I mainly lived off uh, Thunderbird wine, so bad so decisions putting... were my forte at that period. So did, you have, did you have a bed? No. In the house. Did you do... oh, oh, so that was the reason you was were in the bar. There was a... There was a um... well, why did you think he was in the bar? <laughs> I, don't know. I, cho I chose to, Phil, yeah. How many other people were there in the flat? Uh, three. Three people, what, three beds? Yeah. Why would you not sleep on the floor next to the bath? We had a giant uh, 1970s sofa that had a particularly... a peculiar cor corner unit, mm. and I mm. took, um both cushions from that corner unit and they fitted in the bath perfectly and it was incredibly comfortable. So, hang on, it wasn't a freestanding bath? A roll-top? Yeah, was it a roll-top freestanding it, bath? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a freestanding bath, but the, but the end of the bath projected out into the room. Where was this, Greg? Which town were you? We, was this Oxford or Cambridge? <laughs> <laughs> it was in Isleworth in West London. <laughs> It was only because of a, a, a mix-up in housing agreements. Uh, we soon sorted out after a term. I only had to do it for a term. What was the mix-up? 
I'd agreed to move in with these three guys and we got the wrong size house. <laughs> Hang on, that's not, that's not a mix-up, that's just stupidity. <laughs> there was four of right you, you got a three-bedroom house with a bit, a bit of a mix-up. <laughs> the boys blamed me, which is why I got the bath. Why did they blame you? Because I was the one who booked the house. <laughs> How did you get into university? <laughs> Tully, what are you thinking? Marcus. I think it's too preposterous to be true. Mm. The taps, Phil? taps for me, you don't, if you're going to sleep in a bath, you don't put your head no. up the taps. I think it might be true, but I'm not going to over... Oh, well, you're the skip. You've got the armbands, son. I might be the skip. Do you get armbands if you're a captain? <laughs> Only if you can't swim. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I don't know this is in the spirit of this game, this is true. <laughs> That was sufficiently moving. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going it's with, right. I'm going with it. I'm saying it's true now. What okay. are you saying, Skippy? Should we say true? True. Not Probably Skippy, yeah. Rob. Not Skippy. <laughs> That's, That's not good. Good. I'm not going to go and go and fetch help. <laughs> I'm a skip. Right? Someone's fallen into a mine shot. <laughs> Go on, mate. True. We're, true. We're, true. we're going for truth. You're saying it's true. Greg Davis, were you telling us the truth or were you telling a lie? Do you feel, David, any sense of genuine competition in this game? Yes, I do, yeah. Then I think you're going to like me very much. It was a lie. Oh. 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 Yes, it was a lie. Greg didn't sleep in his bathtub every night for his first term at university. As a baby, I was regularly fed coffee in my bottle. <laughs> Lee Max team, what do you make of that? From... from... birth? I thought you were going to say, from your mother's breast. <laughs> <laughs> you were given coffee in the milk. In... you got one milky coffee from a very... Uh, from about the age of three. This is... this is not hot coffee, obviously. Yeah, no, it would have been quite warm. Warm, milky coffee. And when you got older, did you ever say to your parents, why did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> My children like coffee. Nowadays, you can have what they call a uh, kiddichino. A baby chino, baby sorry. Chino. A baby chino. <laughs> Actually, a kiddichino is just a very small pair of trousers. You probably do use them. <laughs> <laughs> if they were putting coffee in your milk... From no, no, they weren't putting coffee in my milk. I was having coffee. Slightly mil milky coffee. Okay, nice. Well, that is the same as putting coffee in milk. <laughs> no, no, that's no, the very well, definition of milk and coffee. Between putting coffee in milk and putting milk in coffee. Well, what is the distinction? Well, it's like the distinction between having a glass of water and going swimming. In the one case, you're putting water in yourself, in the other case, you're putting yourself in water. <laughs> Did they give you other sort of more adult... Foodstuffs at a very young age. I think I was. I think I was allowed uh, uh, a modicum of booze as a as a child. Oh, were you? <laughs> at what age were you allowed booze? I like as a baby. That was to offset the coffee buzz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, what 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 were you given as a child? Lee? Evo stick. <laughs> <laughs> That's glue. Yeah, but that was to stop me getting out the cop. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, as a as a small child. What were they bringing you in your quarters? Uh, just a port and a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> took the words out of my self-parodic mouth. <laughs> um, uh, no, the blood of a pheasant. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Did you say pheasant or peasant? <laughs> Lee, what are you thinking? Is there any truth in this? Which way are you leaning? I don't know. What do you think, guys? I think we're skirting no. on the edge of giving out really bad childcare advice. That, that is true, but I can't help thinking that any parent that's looking at Jimmy and thinking, I want to raise a child like that anyway, <laughs> is a dodgy parent in the first place. You know what I mean? I think it's nonsense. You think it's nonsense? Nonsense, OK. I, th I think it's a lie. You think okay. it's a lie? Well, we'll say yeah. it's a lie, then. Pretty conclusively, yeah. it's a lie. Jimmy Carr, were you telling us the truth then, or were you telling a lie? I can tell you, it is absolutely true. <laughs> Yes, it's true. As a baby, Jimmy was regularly fed coffee in his bottle. Bill, it's uh, your turn. Oh, right. OK. Uh, it says on my card, possession. 
Ah, just to the side there, there's a... <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> just, just, bring, just bring that up there. Pop that up there. And then okay. read the statement before you do anything else. OK. This is Jacob. <laughs> I don't remember those yoghurt drinks making that noise. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Must be live yoghurt. <laughs> This is Jacob. I once smuggled her into the cinema, then had to pretend the noises she was making were coming from me. <laughs> OK, now perhaps you could, you could unveil, take the, 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 the yes. sheet off. Oh. oh, I love cats. <laughs> right, um, please, team. Why on earth would you take Jacob into... Jacob. Hang on. Jacob. 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 Yeah. Jacob. It's spelled. <laughs> Into it's spelled a cinema. Jacob, but pronounced Jacob. Okay. <laughs> I was on tour, yeah. and the bird uh, was on tour with me mm -hmm. in the hotel room, and um, we wanted to go to the cinema. So. Uh, my wife Hang on, and whoa, I... whoa, stop you there. Why was the bird on tour with you? Yeah, good well, question. Well, because um, we we didn't have anyone to look after. We, she's on we, tour. Um, That's a bird with a man's name, then, is it? Oh, sorry, is it a she or a he, the bird? It's a she. But right. why is he called Jacob? Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, but Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> well, no, there was a little bit of a... There was a bit of confusion with the... Um, Sex sexing. Yeah. I first. had that with a rabbit once. Did you? <laughs> yeah. <What>? Sex? <laughs> <laughs> See, well, in the cinema, Sit. we Sit. put. <laughs> in the cinema, we uh, put a, a coat over over the case, right. and we were watching a film. And then, in the middle of the film, there was some music, and she got quite into the music, so she started whistling to the music. What Maybe was the this. film? Entrapment. <laughs> That's a bit insensitive to a bird in a cage. Yeah, well, I did, we didn't think of that at the time. Is that the normal cage that he lives in? He or she lives in at home? No, or does no she this is a one? travel cage. Ah. Uh, it's called a Winnebago. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the bird starts singing along with the music of the film. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then, then what happens? And then, then she started to make noises, and then people started to look round, and they looked round and they heard this noise, and then I actually just went. I went. <laughs> and made a kind of, <laughs> and then, and then she said, uh, "You could like that." And then I had to say that to my wife. I went, "You could like that." <laughs> and I just sort of pass it off like we were having a little conversation. Was anyone sitting next to you? Other there than your a, wife? There was a lot of people in the cinema. What yes. Did they, what did they do? What did they uh, say? They like just thing? thought we were a bit weird. So how, how long have you had Yakov? Yakov. Yeah. Yakov, Yakov must be about uh, 10, 15 years now. And do you have a lot of these animals? We you do. Have? Yes. How many animals? Do you We've have? got about I don't know 30 or 40 animals. 40, 30 animals? Or 40 yes. animals? Really? Yeah. What like? Fish. Uh, I some. don't mean in your that's freezer. Not, I mean. <laughs> Ants. We've got loads of ants. <laughs> <laughs> We've got dogs, cat, I mean, uh, birds. Got We've got a cat. We've got a cat. With the bird, isn't that a problem? No, the cat doesn't stay in the house. Uh, What's he doing? Going around the cinemas? He goes <laughs> home. <laughs> yeah, the cat's got a paper round. Uh, <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? Oh, well, the, I mean, the obvious big clue to this is that he, he seems very close... She seems very close to Bill. <laughs> See? Oh. Oh my God. I've seen oh, Bill do lovely. TV shows where yeah. he's working with wildlife, so I know he uh, likes right. the wildlife. There you go. So it might be so that he's possible. lying, but he knows how to handle that bird. That's what I think. Would you be so bold Can't as to give him a kiss enough. on the lips? I could do. I want talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, then. Give us a kiss. Give me a kiss, kiss. You're right. You're a bit shy. Oh. She's a bit shy. I don't want to stir it up, but she was all over David in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe. I, mean, it's like, I don't lie. think he'd be that lie. irresponsible. I'm going to go lie. OK, my team say lies. You're all lie. saying it's a lie. OK, Bill, okay. was that the truth or was it a lie? It was true. <laughs> ah! I once had a snog with one of the people here on Would I Lie to You Tonight. Oh! <laughs> one of us six. Yeah, six. <laughs> you hang on a minute, I'm here as well. <laughs> 
That's it. It's going to be me. She didn't talk about herself. That's true. That's true. That's true. Oh, God. Oh, my word. I think my, my, my poor grasp of mathematics has never been more cruelly exposed. <laughs> so, one of us six people... You, why am I saying one of us six? I know it wasn't me. One of them <laughs> five... Was no. it you? It's true. <laughs> I'm Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, I generally... It's very uh, awkward I... if all six of us have smoked. <laughs> <laughs> but she could only remember one. <laughs> if it's true, will the person remember, or is it like a, a drunken thing, or...? I don't know if they will remember. This is getting awkward. If this is true, oh. this could be very awkward. I don't so, know. So, how many years ago? I think it was in, uh, 98. So, 15 years ago. Just a snog? Yeah. Oh, Word. it's going to be David at university, isn't it? Why, did they go to university together? They're both Cambridge, aren't they? We did. Yes. And were you but... in the same... Oh! <laughs> 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 no, but... Thickens. David is yeah. quite, a lot, quite a lot younger than me, so... Uh, but were you still hanging it... around the university? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to prey on freshers in freshers' week. <laughs> <laughs> what you haven't said yet, Mel, is you haven't really painted a lovely picture for us of, of the circumstances where you yeah. were. Yep. Just talk us through that. It was a works do. Uh, not me. I've never worked in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was a works do, and everyone had been working very, very hard. <clears throat> it was a, it was a long series, and it was the end of term party. Stop End of looking series at me, Mel. <laughs> the what was the, what was the series? Uh, it the was the England rugby team. <laughs> <laughs> was it a test series? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, was a, it was a show back in the late 90s. Was uh, it Late Lunch? It was called Late Lunch. So, Lunch the show you did Late Lunch, Lunch. The, was the person you kissed a guest on the show, or were they a regular on it, or...? No, Ryan? we were colleagues. This was... is a totally new type of round. This, this is... <laughs> <laughs> you stop it... trying to work out whether it's true or not, just... Who, who it, it was? Yeah. <laughs> who was it? <laughs> but who was it that you kissed? <clears throat> was it Rob? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when you kissed him, he didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it that you kissed? Dermot. It was Dermot. Dermot? It was Dermot. Wow. Oh. <laughs> now, wait, this, is, this is a weird one now, because if it's not true, poor Dermot now has got to answer all these questions. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to question other panellists. Oh, well, this it's is not a, his we're, No, no, we're in new territory. This has never happened before. Rob? My proclamation is thus. You can quiz O'Leary. However, <laughs> oh. he doesn't have to answer unless he so chooses. Well, oh. to be fair, that's true with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot be legally required to speak. If you Did want you to make people to... talk when they don't want to, you have to waterboard them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to waterboard him if you want to. <laughs> Mel, what yes. was Dermot doing in this show? Dermot was the um, guy responsible for getting the audience in. Has Dermot said if he remembers this? Dermot, that, do you remember this? That would, that would scupper my team's chance. I can't answer that. Yeah, oh, that's under. You mean no. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, were, you were working on... I was working on Lila. What was your position? I was, uh, well, I was sort of audience researcher, so... Oh, that's under. Just what she just said, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> in 1998, were you in a relationship or was it OK to push you on this? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you said at the time, Dermot, that you weren't in a relationship. Oh, well, he can't have been then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, what are you going to say then, uh, Lee? What are you thinking? That's an interesting one, this, isn't it? What I do you think? think? I, it feels plausible. like. Plausible. Do you think? It's plausible. It is plausible. It's definitely plausible. I just think O'Leary's been too kind of reticent on the details and the facts. Yeah, yeah. but is he, he could be awkward because he doesn't remember. Or he remembers very well and is trying to play for his team. Gentleman doesn't tell. <laughs> I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? Based on O'Leary. Matt, what, what are you thinking? Uh, on this? I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't think the dates fit. Lie. Well, go with lie then. You're saying it's a I, lie. I think it might be true, but I'm going with my team and okay. saying lie. Mel, it was a wonderful, wonderful tale. Was it true or were you telling a lie? 
Well, Rob, gents, Dermot, <laughs> I was telling the truth. Oh! <laughs> For three weeks, I was listed as a missing person by Interpol. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Uh, when did this happen? In the mid-90s. Where were you? Had you, had you actually disappeared? Like... I was in Morocco. What were you doing there? I was on a bike ride in Spain. You were, on, you were on a bike ride in Spain in Morocco. Can I have a moment to chat with my clients? <laughs> <laughs> what happened was I met someone in Spain on a train, a Moroccan so hang on, man. Was, was, was this bike ride in Spain happening on the train? <laughs> Was it, it was one because I know that you get those Spanish Spanish bike rides on trains in Morocco. That's, that's probably one of those. No, it was there was bad weather, and that's why I took the train from the north of Spain to the south of Spain because apparently, according to the local newspaper, there was better, more agreeable bicycling weather. <laughs> and how, how, did you then get, how did you then get into Morocco, though? That is because I met that Moroccan bloke on the train. <laughs> and, which, and which Moroccan bloke? Yeah, do you have a name? Uh, I, I can't quite remember, but it was Mohammed or something. <laughs> but Mohammed the Moroccan, well. you met on, on the train in Spain. He asked me if I wanted to join him to go to Morocco. And then I thought, well, I've never been outside Europe. In for penny, in for pound. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you were picked up by a strange Moroccan on a on a train and agreed to go back to Morocco with him. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> how, how did you find out that you were on the Interpol list? I realised only once I rang my parents. Once I was back in Spain, and I rang my parents, and for them it was like someone found them from beyond the grave. <laughs> So, so why didn't you ring your parents from Morocco? Because that man, that Mohammed, he... <laughs> he you remember, remember Mohammed, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was the man on the train. The Moroccan on the, the train. The Moroccan on the train, the train, train yeah, who invited yeah. him back to his house. So yeah. and then when I was staying uh, with Mustafa and his family... <laughs> <laughs> from what uh, port did you leave Spain and into which port did you enter Good Morocco? Good question. Well, we left Spain, if I remember correctly, from Alcaceras and went over to Suta, which is one of the two Spanish enclaves in the north of Morocco. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've just clutched victory from the jaws of defeat. <laughs> How was it then resolved? How did you end up getting off of the list? Well, hang on a minute, we're jumping ahead. Yeah, what the hell yeah he's allowed to do that, him, isn't he? <laughs> I was travelling uh, with Ar with Ar no uh, Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed. Uh, <laughs> my client is getting mixed up because at passport control they said you must have a passport. <laughs> and he's getting a bit mixed up with the name. I'm curious as to the fact that Interpol has a missing persons list. Yeah. No. What happened is my uh, parents uh, got involved and they got Interpol involved. Right. So, and I sent a few postcards, one of them, to my friend Mark. And on that postcard, I wrote, I've joined the Foreign Legion. <laughs> Probably see you never again, have a good life or something. And then Mark, being a quite clever boy, thought, OK, with this postcard, I can have a lot of fun. I go round Henning's parents and say them something along the lines of, oh, uh, Herr Wien, Frau Wien, you might be interested in this. Sorry, so your friend Mark yes. used this postcard to mentally torture your parents. <laughs> I'll make his parents think he's disappeared forever for a laugh. Well, it's German sense of humour. <laughs> About this, uh, about this Moroccan chap who we're calling Mohammed. 
He hadn't been home for many, many years. And so we couldn't take the boat straight to Morocco. We had to go to one of the Spanish enclaves because he had to collect a suitcase full of books from a cafe in well, Ceuta. <laughs> why, why did he have a suitcase full of books? Because someone left them there for him. <laughs> but why books in a suitcase? Well, that is, it was back in the mid-90s. People were still reading. <laughs> So he went to a cafe in the Spanish enclave of Morocco yes. to collect a suitcase which he told you was full of books. <laughs> well, I suppose a friend of his left them there. Yes, but I why? mean, you know what it sometimes is like, isn't it? Like, uh, well, I can't quite think of it. <laughs> <laughs> but if he could, it would be like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this Interpol list that you were on, can you just elaborate on how your parents got you onto it? Well, they rang the consulate and they rang which all sorts of... Which consulate? The German one. Which, and... which German consulate? Well, the one in Morocco. They, they, they and didn't the ring the police, in... they rang the German consulate in Morocco. Well, that's how you would go about it, wouldn't you? It's not good know. ringing your local Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens then with the list? Do you just... They have to tell Interpol, stop yeah. looking for Henning. We yeah, found it. I suppose it. so, yeah. Well, did they? <laughs> for all My we know, they're still like... looking for you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safe! <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, David? Does, that, does any of that have the ring of truth, or has he made all that up? What do you think, Kirsty? I think it's so odd and inconsistent and unlikely that it must be true. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm leaning towards well. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, think, I, I think, think that as true. well. I think it's true. Yeah. Henning, was that the truth or were you telling a lie? Well, this story is true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Henning was listed as a missing person by Interpol. Next. I once hid a girl in my bed whilst my entire family came into the bedroom to have a conversation with me. <laughs> right, Lee. Now, uh, how old were you? Um, I was uh, 18. And, a bit of a nervy, nervy question, how 15. old was she? No, she was... Uh, <laughs> she, was <laughs> she wasn't, she was of age. Of age? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 64. 64. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was just of a normal age. She was age. a clean. She'd be a normal age. She's a normal age. She's a bit ageist, isn't it? She's an 18 year old. Are you saying boy? that Rob's abnormal? <laughs> well, yeah, if Rob was in my bed, it would be a bit weird. But... Actually, well, a lot easier to hide him. <laughs> <laughs> just pop him in the pillowcase, throw him over your shoulder, off you go. So, you'd had a lovely, tender time with this young lady. The next morning arrived, the start of a whole new dawn, mm. and she was secreted, hidden, under the, <laughs> under the duvet. My dad comes in, knock, knock, and knock. I say... Get under there. Under there. And what did your dad say? No, no, no. He's a I don't want to have to have an awkward moment with my dad introducing him to this girl, so I said, why don't you just hide under there? <laughs> was, it, was she a very thin girl? <laughs> because I would have thought you would have seen a body under a duvet. Yeah. You see, you don't understand the kind of toggage that I'm rocking back at home. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very thick duvet. A like, thick? Yeah, yeah, plenty of... Was it, was it winter? Duvet Jack? to hide. Was yeah, it, winter? it was winter. See, but I there's nothing cold, worse right? than a heavy tog in the summer. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> but I have um, two duvets within the, the right. thing, and then so I take do one I. So do I. I take one away for the summer, Yeah. stick it back on for the winter. It's a lovely way of doing it's it. So it. Good. <laughs> I'm sure. God, is it always this boring, this show? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just going to cut to the chase here. You two, watch him very carefully while I ask this question. What was her name? Yeah, well, that's no... <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't say on TV. <laughs> Why? Oh, very good. I want to protect her modesty. But do right. your whole family As I did come on into your bedroom often? Oh, nice. Yeah, my dad go, oh, always... 
Morning. My dad will always come into my room, and he always brings in the Telegraph and reads to me little extracts that he's found. And then your mum's behind him, and then your brother and sister. Can we listen? What happened this one morning was that my dad had received a round robin, so he came in to read me this letter. I said hide under the duvet. Then my mum came in with a cup of tea, and my dad was reading this letter, so he was like, "Oh, Molly, Barnaby, why don't you come in as well?" Sounds like a rough family. So. <laughs> uh, they were all round the bed, and she was sort of hidden under there. It was quite a long letter as well, so I had to keep sort of giving her a bit of air. And then... <laughs> You're doing that with Yeah. Is it, is it a single bed or a double bed? Uh, it's one of these ones that's like a small double bed. Well, like, they're called oh, single, single bed. bed. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah, it wasn't... Is this, is this the first time that had happened? Had they... Had you never I'd had been a in that girl, situation before? Or? I'd brought a girl back before, okay. but I'd been very careful to sort of sneak her out in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'd, like, distracted my dad, and then you just oh, go, so go, that, go, go. that was the plan? The plan was you were going to sneak her out without anyone noticing? Through the yeah. laund laundry chute? Um, <laughs> I didn't know what a laundry chute is. The butler normally just takes oh, it from right. the room. <laughs> you know, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, but I was planning on sort of, you know, sort of sneaking out and not having to deal with this situation. Yeah. And, and at the end, she was under there for too long. I had to let her out. Not oh, let her out. That sounded like... <laughs> she, was, she wanted to be there initially. Yeah. Um, the only way you can conceal someone lying under a duvet is to lie on top of them in exactly the same body shape that they are. Yeah. Really. Well, I was sort of, you know... I like... It's sort of over her. What the hell are you doing? No, no, I just... Like, yeah, so yeah. I could... You know, I had a I bit of my body on her. I don't like humans touching me. <laughs> All right, so what do you think, Lee? OK, I, I think... Well, sorry, Jim, what do you think? True, I think. You think it's true? I am. Um, I'm borderline true, yeah, true. Borderline go true. true. Go on, then. We'll go with true. You're going to say true? Mm -hmm. OK. Jack Whitehall, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is a true... Oh. Scandalous. Wow. <laughs> That's all we need. It's true. That's all we Yes, it's true. Uh, Jack did once hide a girl in his bed whilst his family came into the bedroom to have a conversation with him. <laughs> Five years ago, I spent a whole week building an elaborate contraption just so my wife can let me know when lunch is ready. <laughs> David's team. What is this contraption? A telephone. <laughs> <laughs> it's an, a contraption that goes from the house to the bottom of the garden where, where I spend most of the morning. But why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because I've got a little shed down there where I where I write. Describe this this contraption to us. Okay. Well, it's long. <laughs> it's I've got a very long garden, mm -hmm. and oh, okay. uh, it's on a slight uh, incline. Mm -hmm. It's made out of tubes, and my wife operates one end. I receive. <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> I receive, I receive something that comes out the other end of the tube. So it's, it's a very long tube, and she puts a little ball in one end. And the ball plops out the other end. And that's when lunch is ready. You sound like somebody who is teaching sex education but hasn't got a clue yourself. Well, there's a ball at one end, and the ball comes out the other end, and, and that's when, that's when lunch is ready. <laughs> Elaborate. Is it the length of it? Yes. How long is it? Long. 60 metres. 60 metre long garden? I mean, you're doing well, so but not, not that well. Right. <laughs> How wide is your garden? Is it one metre? <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? And <laughs> eight metres wide. Why okay. doesn't she just phone you or text you or WhatsApp you? <laughs> because, Rob, um, there's no phone reception at the bottom of the garden. You said your garden's on an incline, so is she yeah, putting said... a ball in one end? How's that travelling up? Well, it's an incline. Well, the incline from my end is at from... the house, yeah, and it... the bottom part <laughs> is... It really is quite simple. No, but that's, a, de that's a decline. No, a decline is what you would do if David was to suggest something a bit fruity. <laughs> that is a decline. <laughs> what happens when it reaches the shed? It plops... Oh, yes, yes. ..into the lid of a metal bin. OK. Oh. So, once it's installed, that's it. You can forget about it. I should take the pipes off the ground. Oh. All right. how, how did you suspend it off the ground? In a hedge. The pipe's very important as well, cos we had a similar system at my house where we didn't use the pipe. My wife was at the bottom <laughs> in the shed working, <laughs> and I used to just roll it, roll the golf ball down, and there'd been a heavy snowfall, <laughs> and it gathered momentum, <laughs> and it pushed it off. 
<laughs> yeah, that's awful. The whole thing was flattened, yeah. and uh, that's sadly how my wife died. So it's very important <laughs> to keep it in case. <laughs> All right, well, look, what are you thinking? It does sound to me a little fantastical. It's peak boredom, isn't it? And some people get bored. I think the show's the going fine. <laughs> 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 I think it's true. I think it's true as well. I'm going to say it's true. OK, so, uh, Alex, <gasps> truth or lie? 60 metres. True! <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Alex has built a contraption just so his wife can tell him when lunch is ready. And we've got a clip of it. Yes! Oh. oh, my God. Whoa! Wow. I love it! Oh. I love it! It was oh, just no. like you described it. I was ticked off by the headmaster after I mistakenly packed a pina colada in my daughter's lunchbox for a school trip. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Oh, what did you what think did you, it yeah, was? What did you think it was? Well, they have these lovely, really lovely, like frozen packs for the freezer, and you just take them out and squeeze them out. It's like a little frozen, but they really look <laughs> juicy. I thought it was just a little juice. Are you thinking of fruit shoots and things no, like no, that? No, no, no. I'll tell you the name. Do you want to know the brand name of yes, it? Yes, I do. Capri Sun. Oh, the fruit drink in a pouch. Delicious. Love them. <laughs> so why did you think that it was anything else? Because you were the one that bought it. Yeah, because I just buy lots of stuff for the fridge. I just grabbed it because I'm not with it in the morning because I've been having pina coladas the night before. <laughs> What did the person at school? You, you, did you get a telephone call or were you invited in? Oh, oh I was invited in on well, this What did they say? Hello, your daughter's drunk. Yeah. No. <laughs> she has six year olds wasted again. She didn't drink it. She knew right away what it was. It wasn't for her. Did she report you? Yeah. Oh, she's a grass. She's such a grass. She tells people, my mummy hides wine in the walls. But in that's the walls? a wine rack. Oh, I see. <laughs> but they have a problem with me anyway. Why? Why? They've met well, yeah, they've met me. That's number one. I I do the school run in a in a bathrobe. No. Oh, what? One of those. Really? You go to school in a bathrobe. Yes, because. What have you got under the bathrobe? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk this through now. You, you've gone into the school. They've called you in to the headmaster or headmistress's office. Mm -hmm. What happens? And they just said, um, I suppose you thought you were being funny, and I said, I'm sorry. What was funny? And they said, you know what you thought was funny. And I said, no, I they really don't They spoke to know. you like that, a parent. Yeah. You should see my fresh look. They think I'm 16. That's the other problem. Who does? The, the faculty. How sympathetic know. was this lighting? Was it sort of... <laughs> <laughs> don't you find that... The... We've been doing this show 11 years. That's the most catty thing that's ever been <laughs> So, Catherine, he says to you, what do you think you were doing? What happened then? He had the pina colada in his desk drawer and said it's not funny to send your daughter on a school trip with alcohol. Wow. What do you think, truth or lie? I could see her doing it. Yes. I really could see you doing it, Catherine. Thanks. <laughs> but I think it's a lie. So basically, you don't think this particular incident is true, but she possibly is an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's most certainly a lie. OK, well, You're my team seems to think it's a lie, so we'll say lie. OK, Catherine, truth or lie? Nah. It is a lie. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Catherine didn't put a pina colada in her daughter's lunchbox. The D in my name stands for delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, why? Well, it was the late 60s when I was born, 1969. There are a lot of uh, black men my age around that time being given names like Reginald and Winston and Delicious because... <laughs> <laughs> because uh, at that time in America, affirmative action had just started. So black women saw an opportunity for their children to get more jobs. So what they did was we would give him a name that will enable him to be, you know, recognizable yet dignified to potential employers. And... And delicious is dignified. Well, I mean, you have to understand how... Th it's, look, it's a little different in the black community than it is in your white world. And... <laughs> and 
And so, um, like the name Delicious commands great respect in the, in the ghetto. Uh, <laughs> You, uh, you, you probably don't listen to much rap music, do you, Fern? Uh, and, uh, there's uh, MC Delicious, uh, um, Big Papa Delicious. French Golden. <laughs> Where did Reginald come from? Uh, Reginald is a German name. It means mighty or wise power. And, um, uh, delicious means, uh, very tasty. <laughs> what was your father's name? My father's name is Homer. <laughs> and what was his middle bit? He didn't have a middle name. No. Um, uh, he grew up in the 30s and 40s, and it was very tough times for black people, and he couldn't afford a middle name. <laughs> and do you have brothers and sisters? I do, indeed. And what are their names? Um, well, there's, there's Brenda, there's Kathy, there's Oliver, um, there's Scrumptious. Um, <laughs> uh... I don't think people would have thought that calling you delicious would help you get jobs, except, <laughs> except as a food. <laughs> well, I think, uh, shall we say it's a lie? I yeah. think that's what we're yeah. going to feel stupid, but it's that. true. So you're saying it's a lie? Yes. OK, Reg, is it uh, the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what does the D stand for in your name? What does the D stand for in my name? None of your business. <laughs> The D in Reg's name does not stand for delicious. I did once meet a person called Delicious, but uh, not sure it was her real name, uh, or if the other girl was really her sister, or if either of them were actually qualified nurses. <laughs> I am currently seeing a hypnotist to cure me of my compulsion to visit hypnotists. <laughs> is going to take too long. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been had a compulsion to see hypnotists? Well, it started off I had a fear of heights and I visited a, a lot of different practitioners. It is a serious enough thing. I mean, it is. It's unusual to be this high. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I tried hypnosis and then I seemed to be getting something temporary from it, so then I ended up visiting a lot more hi what, hypnotists. What and... were you getting temporary from it? I, I was getting some relief from it for a while. From your, from your fear of heights? Yeah. So you're now relieved of that at this point. Why would you go back? Oh, because then uh, the relief is temporary. So I, I ended up going back and then I ended up getting uh, really uh, addicted to visiting dip, different hit. What do they do? <laughs> Normally they just put me under for a minute. Put and under then what? Put your water. <laughs> they, they make me, it's serious, they make me lie, <laughs> lie on the ground. So they make you lie on the ground? <laughs> going to cure your fear of fires? That should, surely they should make you lie on top of the cupboard. <laughs> well, I am knocked out during this, and then when I, uh, when I wake up, they put me on top of something. Oh, <laughs> oh right. So how many different hypnotists have you seen? I don't know. It's into the hundreds at this point. <laughs> hundreds of hypnotists? It was costing... Most of my income was going on it. I mean, I would do... Whatever money I could get was just going straight into hypnosis then. <laughs> How long have you been seeing the, the one you've been seeing now for to get to get you off being seeing the hypnotist? Well, this one about two years now. I mean, um, it, it, so the yeah. man you've been seeing for the last two years has been specifically to for, for the problem that you want to stop seeing hypnotists. <laughs> not not for the height thing anymore. Just I'm addicted to hypnotists. I need to stop. That's what you're seeing him for. Yeah. And you've been seeing him for two years. <laughs> we are nearly at, we're nearly out of the woods. <laughs> Do they ever touch you in any way? Generally, the sort of uh, severe vertigo hypnosis I get doesn't involve physical contact, but it does involve being winched up. 
Winched up. <laughs> well, winched up to get to get the height. So, so then when you come around, you're at, you're at a height and you so, think so this you, is you, normal. When you when you when he puts you under. Well, this is going back when I had the serious problem. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Well, let's go back to that problem. But they interest me. The winching up. So yeah. he, they 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 put you out and, and then you're gone. Do you remember being? Do you wake up and no, go? No, you're gone. Get up you put on a sort of Velcro suit at the start. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Same. No, it's like you're, I'm gone, and then it's come down from up there on top of the uh, <laughs> of the cupboard. So they winch you up, and then winch you down onto the cupboard. Now I can get down because I've been <laughs> hypnotised. So, but you've been winched up to go on top of the cupboard <laughs> while I'm under. Yeah. So he winches you up, then slightly nudges, slightly nudges you over the cupboard and winches you down again. <laughs> why? Why does he have to put you on the cupboard? Why does he just winch you up and keep you winched? What's the advantage of being on a cupboard over being winched up? Have you got a fear of being up high on cupboards? <laughs> What's the name of the hypnotist you see? Dr. Spanks. <laughs> <laughs> never before, never before. As a You're man, doing really well. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done it. Seen it. <laughs> You know when you you know when you start a sentence and you don't know how it's going to end. <laughs> it's never happened before with just two words, doctor and spank. <laughs> He's German. <laughs> oh no. He's German, yeah. German. <laughs> it's very emotional. <laughs> It's a tricky one. Well, it's a tough one. I'm really going with you on this one. What do you say? <laughs> Even if I believed everything else, I've never met anybody German called Spanks. <laughs> it's S P E umblaut. G H N K S. You just ruined it. <laughs> oh, is that what ruined it? Because there is never an umlaut on an E. There's never a man being velcroed and winched <laughs> Focusing on I think not the spelling of his surname. Right. So, Lee. I'm going to say it's a lie then. He's saying it's a lie. David O'Doherty, was that fantastic tale the truth or was it a lie? Incredible as it seems, that is a lie. <laughs> yes, uh, unsurprisingly, it's a lie. David isn't seeing a hypnotist to cure him of a compulsion to visit hypnotists. Uh, I went to see a hypnotist once. All the time he was saying, look into my eyes. Look in... Sorry, sorry, not hypnotist. Optician. <laughs> Possession. Ah, right. First of all, yes. take the item out and pop it on the desk. Then read out the card. This is my woolly hat. I can't wear it because whenever my ears get warm, I fall asleep. <laughs> Right. <laughs> David's team. Uh, uh, when... Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you to fall asleep when your ears get warm? Um, well, I'd say ten minutes. The problem you've done there now, Joss, is you've made it possible to demonstrate. <laughs> you, might, you might want to change that to four and a half days. OK. Do you want me to put the hat on for ten minutes? Yes. OK. And have you had many embarrassing situations with this? Well, problem. I'm currently wearing it on primetime TV. Yeah. <laughs> have you, like, snoozed off? I have, yeah. I've moments. numerous... I've snoozed off probably three times. Will you describe the three times in reverse order of hilariousness? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the... <laughs> <laughs> OK, so all three times have been on trains. And uh, in reverse order of hilariousness, didn't miss my stop, didn't miss my stop, missed my stop. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the order right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gemma's got one that only covers one ear, so are, yeah. you, are you sleepy on the left-hand side? I am. <laughs> Don't judge me, I just... <laughs> Can I... Th genuinely, my ears are warming up and I'm feeling... <laughs> Can I take it off? You genuinely are feeling a bit drowsy. Presumably, sometimes you don't want to fall asleep, but wouldn't it also be quite useful if it's true, because... I do... I have done that, Rob. To get off, stick it on. I can honestly tell you, Rob, that this has never helped me get off. 
I don't think anyone would get off if you were that. No. <laughs> no. Oh, so oh, soon okay. in the show, Sophie. Right. There's yeah. seven billion people on this planet. Some of them are into anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's reassuring. Thank you very much, yeah, David. Exactly, absolutely. But that's, you know. There's some weirdo out there that would be into me in a hat. Do you know what, David? Since you got married, you've been very cocky. <laughs> <laughs> so, why were you wearing it on the train anyway? They're not perfectly run, our railways, but I don't <laughs> usually find that no, the, the I... temperature is arctic I'll in be a honest railway with carriage. You, David. Don't, don't insult me with that phrase, because we know the format is you may not be being honest, and, and I, I won't hold that against you. It's a parlour game. You know. okay, okay. You're not denying an affair. You know. um, <laughs> you're not denying it. <laughs> Josh Whittacombe fails to deny affair. <laughs> this sounds crass, but I wore it on the train because I didn't want people to recognise me. <laughs> so you, you thought I, the way of detracting attention <laughs> is to put on an enormous bobble hat. <laughs> what are you thinking, Gemma? I don't think this is true. I think it's a lie. Yeah, it's got to be a lie. Who falls asleep by putting a hat on? Well, I think it might be true. Oh. But Ooh. I'm not going to overrule my team. Because Never. I'm, but I'm just going to... Just... You don't have the strength of character for that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so they're saying it's a lie. Josh yeah. Widdicombe, truth or lie? David. It's true. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yes, it's true. Josh does fall asleep if his ears get warm. I taught my kids the alphabet by singing it to the EastEnders theme tune. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's panicking now because he knows the EastEnders theme tune, but he doesn't know the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to ask you to do it just yet because Good. we can't win. If he does it badly, he might be bluffing. If he does it well... We'll all try and do it together. Well, I mean, I've taught my children. I can teach you. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it's just one note, one letter. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Lovely. No, 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 no. Not lovely. <laughs> But that's not got a definite end. It does, because then it gets mid. And I don't that's know if you, how you learn the alphabet. Yes. <laughs> oh. But he didn't do that, You're did he? You're a better parent than I am, no. I might incorporate that. I've got a three-year-old who's, who's going through it at the moment, okay. so... Right. Uh, although we're doing it with Cory. Trying to mix it, mix it up a little bit. You could do so. Cory for counting. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six... Think... <laughs> Are there any other things you put to theme tunes? Yeah, we do the periodic table elements to Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> Is Stenders on in South Africa? No. Just get the box set and catch up. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a letter to a note. Because yeah. you could have gone A, <laughs> B, C, D, F, G. Yeah, but I wanted to make it... I haven't finished. <laughs> H, I, J, K, Sophie, I don't want to put you in this invidious position, but <laughs> mm -hmm. as a pop star, if you had to choose between one or the other, which would you go for? I did really enjoy it. Thanks those, very yeah. much. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Is it true? I don't know, Ooh, I was just thinking about you saying, who would you choose, me or Jason? <laughs> I, I can't help thinking she'd be swiping left for both. I can't help thinking she'd be swiping right for both. I don't know which way around it is, but you can use that in the edit. <laughs> I think it's not true. Sophie? I'm going to say it's a lie. Yeah. I think it's a lie. Jason, truth or lie? It is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a lie Jason didn't teach his kids the alphabet using the EastEnders theme. I developed a word association system to remember people's names but gave it up when it backfired on me. David. Um, what, what was the word association system? Um, that to, I developed? To help remember people's names. <laughs> It was, I, Jack, um... you've just got a bit of fluff on you. Thank you very much. Keep thinking, oh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 What I do is I attach uh, a quality to someone and then, try and, and then try and relate that quality 
to the person's name. So just for example, so, what would that uh, be? So Jason Manford, if I, if I think Jason and the Argonauts, and that, that would perhaps, and then next time I'll see you, I'll think uh, Argonauts will make me think of Jason. What's Argonaut like about Jason? <laughs> uh, for instance, J Jason the Argonauts, mm. I might therefore J and Argonaut gives me Juggernaut. Right. And you look to me like a lorry driver. Right. <laughs> Therefore, I would think lorry driver Jason. And then when you next meet him, you say, Hi, Yorkie, how are you? He's, well, uh, it, it well, has been known is, which to is, backfire. Which is where we come to the hilarious backfiring anecdote. Oh, um, <laughs> that was a bad one. Yeah. I, um, we, we met someone uh, on holiday, and um, he, uh, was, he, his name was Charles. And he wore uh, very big sunglasses, like 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 a, only a blind person would wear. Mm. And um, so I thought, that's brilliant, Ray Charles, because I will remember, I remember from the sunglasses, and therefore I will get Charles. And then the very so next year when we go, I can confidently say hello, Charles. But it didn't work. It's twelve months later, and you've slightly forgotten what what you'd set up as a system. So he walks in. I go, hello, Stevie. <laughs> Did you, where did you meet him? Where was it? On the holiday. Where was it? <laughs> in Holidayville. Yeah. Just in Do uh, Dorset. It was in Dorset. And what? So you were in a pub. You were in a pub, and he walked over, and you went Stevie. Uh, he came. Uh, yeah. It was the following year, and I saw him again. And uh, in, in, did he in, live in, round where, there? Where were you sat? No, he was a fellow holiday maker. So, and you, de <laughs> you developed a, a sort of mild acquaintanceship with a man whose name you could barely remember, but yes. planned to holiday with him again. <laughs> no, there was no plan involved, David. We didn't get together and say, "Are you going to be here next year?" Yes, are you? But you obviously thought it was a possibility because you already had a plan for remembering his name. Oh, I perhaps <laughs> didn't explain correctly yeah. that I'd seen him the previous year at the same place and not known his name. So now it's so three uh, years <laughs> on your <laughs> So for three years, you and Charles holidayed with, with metronomic regularity <laughs> at the same place in Dorset. You kind of escaped the Well, that's the man. not so unusual. People tend to frequent the same place for holidays. Year one, you, you see him, but you don't exchange names. And then year in, two, you yeah. learn his name. To, to clarify this point, year one, there's no reason why I would know his name, because I hadn't been introduced to him. No. Th there's no reason for you to know year, his name at all. Year two, I had forgotten his name, but endeavoured to remember it for the third year. <laughs> right. All right, David. Is that the truth, or is it part of Jack's impish sense of fun and a lie? Um, I think it's the truth. Do you? I think it's a lie. I think... I think it's true. I think I'm going to go for true. Fine, that's all right. You know. You're but, saying true? That's fine. Yeah. That's the team decision. OK. Jack D. It was uh, true. Oh, oh hey. Hey. That's me. Very good. Well done. Don't believe me. <laughs> it's true. Jack did develop a word association system to remember people's <laughs> names that gave it up when it backfired on him. When I worked in a school, I locked another teacher in a cupboard to teach him a lesson. Oh. What did you teach? Uh, humanities. Humanities? I thought you were going to say humans, then. <laughs> humanities. Uh, yeah. What age were the kids? I'm checking out your teaching credentials before we get to the other bit of yeah, the Yeah, you're all good. Secondary school kids. Secondary school? Yeah, and where, where in the country was this? Uh, in the West Midlands. West Midlands, right, OK. You're a teacher, aren't you? Does all that stack up? I'm not, I'm not anymore, Lee. You used to be a teacher, didn't no, you? I'm a well-known comedian. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely thought you were a celebrity teacher, that's why you were here. I thought you were... <laughs> about teaching people in Yorkshire. Is that not ah. you? Oh. Where did you do your teaching degree? Never mind that. Where did you do your comedy gigs? <laughs> <laughs> um, why did you lock the other teacher in? Was it a cupboard? Yeah, it was a humanities cupboard, yeah. yeah. Why did you lock him in there? Uh, me and him had, had beef on site. Uh, and beef on what? On site. Is that a sandwich? Uh, so, no. <laughs> As soon as we locked eyes, yeah. uh, I knew there was going to be an issue because he thought he was the most popular teacher amongst the kids. So I turned up at school, and within a week, I was the most popular teacher in school. Big he was head. very. Listen, I'm just, I'm what just saying. What made you such a popular teacher? I was like the Pied Piper of literacy. Kids were following me around everywhere, like, yo, sir. That is, that what is would... quite a claim. <laughs> <laughs> in the humanities department. That's correct. <laughs> Ignore humanity. <laughs> Come and read 
my novels, children. <laughs> yeah, and so obviously the reputation's going around school, like, yeah, sir, taught me how to use full stops and that, he's a sick guy. <laughs> so... <laughs> a sentence that has never been uttered by anybody under the age of 21. <laughs> he taught me how to use full stop he's a sick guy. Yeah. How long did you lock him in a cupboard for? Uh, actually, here's, here's part of the story that you need to know fundamentally. The reason why I chose him to lock him in the cupboard on that day is because I knew it would make him late for his lesson observation. Observation? Yes. So a lesson observation um, is essentially how teachers are judged on how good they are as teachers, yeah? Uh, it's not based on how you move these children on emotionally, spiritually, how you build them as human beings. It's a 15-minute window in which a waste man that can't teach themselves comes in and judges you. Is not right? <laughs> so, so you locked him in so he'd get into trouble on his obs... Oh. Yeah, I did. Should I tell you why? Please do. He started spreading a rumour amongst the senior leadership team that I wasn't marking my students' books. <sighs> right? Is that bad? <laughs> I wasn't, but that's not the point. You know what I mean? <laughs> Snitching on other teachers, right? And what was the upshot of all of this? Well, Did you let he... him out? Did he escape? Is he still there? <laughs> no, I, I did let him out eventually. I just wanted to ensure that he was late for that lesson observation because that means you're looked upon very harshly by the senior leadership team that he had been snitching me out to. So, you know, fair, fair, square, squares, you know what I'm saying? If you were capable of locking a man in this cupboard, surely a kid could have got locked in there and it would have been a health and safety disaster. Yeah, I banged a couple of them in there as well every now and then. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you thinking? I'm saying it's true, Lucy. Do you need rebooting? I guess it's lie. Are you? I just find it implausible. Do you believe people can have beef on site? <laughs> Persuadable. I don't feel so strongly about it. Well, they say it's true. You can say it's true. OK. Guz, were you just telling us the truth or were you telling us a lie? I was telling... <laughs> Last summer, I lost a tennis match when a bee buzzed up the leg of my shorts <laughs> at a crucial moment. <laughs> Please, team. Right. What was the crucial moment? Match point. <laughs> what was the score at that point in sets? Uh, I'll be honest, we, we only played one set. And what was the scoring games at that point? At that point? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the scoring games. <laughs> I think you know what I'm asking you, David. Was or at five four. To you. Three, two, one, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it was five, five four. four. To you. No, no, I lost. Oh, I've seen a crucial point. Right, so, did this bee sting you or did he come in, have a quick shifty and exit? <laughs> uh, a shifty and exit? Well, well so, uh, did yeah. he exit out of the other leg? And, <laughs> or was anything blocking his passage? <laughs> <laughs> Do you play regularly? I don't really know. I, I used to play more regularly, but I've, I've what, what now I play. What standard would you say you are? If zero is someone that's never played in it ever, and yeah. ten is Boris Becker, what are you? What's one? <laughs> Tim Henman. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this case, I'm probably a 0.3. <laughs> would you give us a demonstration mm. of your serve technique? Oh yes, It'd be that... lovely. I think for Lee and his team. If they had an idea, they look at this serve, they say, well, there's a guy who wouldn't be bamboozled by a bumble. Yeah. Or maybe he would. <laughs> I have to say, I think this is totally pointless. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Um, I like, so, I like say... who joins in with the fob. <laughs> I'm so sorry, this is just a waste of your time. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, this is yeah. the racket in my right hand. David, why don't, why don't? <laughs> I'm so sorry, I... OK, caught it. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Are you gonna actually, okay. You're not going to fire it at me, are you? I'll, 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 aim it I'll, over I'll, there. I'll zing it down that way. Please do, yeah. OK. <laughs> 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 a bit 
did, David. Yeah. That was, you, that's you, barely you managed to, net. You don't believe I, I see them like that? No. I want to see your feet off the ground and put something... I want to see you grunting. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on, wait a minute. Like <laughs> <laughs> a ball, have you? It went over there. <laughs> Ready? Right, go on then. I'm gonna re I'm gonna grunt. Go for I'm it. I'm gonna put my back into this. Go on then. I'm gonna show I want it. <laughs> You're doing that with your hands, trying to get rid of the bees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bouncing the ball. That's how you congratulate a small child. <laughs> well done, son. You did very well. <laughs> okay, and oh! <laughs> that was lovely, thank you. That was lovely. That was well, I think so. That was more than we could ever have hoped. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think? He doesn't look like a tennis player. He probably has picked up a tennis racket. I don't think he's claiming to be at county level. He doesn't look like is it, he would be at any level. No, that but he's... Just... <laughs> I, th I think that's a lie. You think it's a lie? Yeah. Rick? I think it's a lie, cos he would... Maybe a bee flew up his shorts when he was having ice cream, but he definitely... <laughs> <laughs> Thing I've ever heard of this <laughs> okay, we're saying it's a lie. Okay, David, was that the truth or was it a lie? It was a lie. <laughs> I was sacked from my job in a call centre for repeatedly using different accents on the phone. <laughs> David's team. Who were you in a call centre for? Who did you work for? I was working for Royal Mail. R Royal what? Mail? Yes. And what sort of call do you get? Where, where's my post? <laughs> it was a while ago, and um, you used to not have Google, and people used to ring for postcodes. What's your favourite accent to do? So obviously, Welsh is easy, so... Would you do the accent of the postcode? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that would... Sometimes you could do that. So, OK, I'll be the person okay. who needs... My postcode. Okay. okay. <laughs> 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 that does sound like a pre Google phone, I'll give you that. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Hola, da. I need a postcode, please. That's nice. Oh, are you Welsh as well? Ah, then we have a Oh, nothing now, to be the Mayor. I can Mayor a sitting at a panel, like I can get a moron to your left. <laughs> All right, um, 14 Mac Avenue. Oh, now where's that now? <laughs> it's just round the corner from Success Street. <laughs> <laughs> 14 Mac Avenue, Deadsville, Nowhere Town. I mean, that is... <laughs> oh, it is in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that's very near Swansea. Uh, the postcode you require is S for Sugar, W for Wilson, H <laughs> R for Robert. B for Bertie. That's a lot nearer Wimbledon than I expected. <laughs> SW. Well, I wasn't always right. <laughs> David, why don't you make an inquiry? Okay. okay. Um, hello. Well, uh, hang on, you've got to ring her first. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. The sooner this is privatised, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. Hello. Hi. Oh, I, I wasn't expecting to speak to an American. No, I know. It's. Just, it's Excited, and we just I just came over here and I got myself a job. That's very good. Oh, That's were very you good. working nine to five by any chance? <laughs> How can yes. I help y'all? Well, I would like... How y'all doing there? You have a nice day? <laughs> it's so hot here in London, I can't tell you. I'm sweating like a pig. <laughs> well, hang on, it's not one of those lines, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's real hot here. Yeah. I might just get out of these hot <laughs> In which case, at the other end, you'd hear, ah, really? Oh, gosh, well, I, well, I, 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 I certainly wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so how did they discover that you were doing these voices? I didn't know, but they were listening in <laughs> to check. For training purposes. Mm. And so they were listening in for a week on me. <laughs> Look, I have as much of a sense of fun as the next man. But that's... I hope it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> That's very disrespectful to your employers. They were paying me, like, four sixty an hour, I think. Well, work more hours. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
work more hours, save up, you can go on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> So what did they say to you? What did they say to you? They took me aside and it was there was going to be like Christmas break and they just said, we're asking everyone back after Christmas, but we're not asking you. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said, that's fine, sure, I don't even care. But, uh... <laughs> so what do you think? Claude? Uh... Yeah, you have to say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? They wouldn't wait a week to fire her. I'd have fired her immediately. <laughs> I think it's believable that you could be that bored in a phone centre. I, I'm leaning towards true. OK, you're saying it's true. Okay. Carry out. Truth or lie? It's true! <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Carry out was sacked from her job for using different accents. Lysit is first tonight. Oh, yes, OK. I once had a fight with a flamingo at work. <laughs> <laughs> Last Christmas, the biggest family row in the Lysett household was over how many doof doofs there are in the EastEnders closing theme tune. Oh. Lee Max yeah. team. So you mean the bit just before the music starts, the. I think, I mean, obviously, you know, I, you I were in EastEnders. I, yeah, but I never actually got myself a doof doof. Oh, no. I was there for six years, no doof doof. You never had a doof doof? I did, I had one doof doof, and, and Wendy Richards was in it, and then when they took it to the edit, they zoomed in on her and cut me out of the doof doof. <laughs> How many doof doofs did your family decide there were? So, it was a generational gap. Yes. So, me and my sister thought there were eight, because there are eight. <laughs> my parents <laughs> thought there were seven. Give us, give us your eight. Doof, 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 doof. Oh, I think no, you're sorry, wrong. Excuse me, though. No, 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 that can't be. That's not how many doof doofs doof, there are. Yeah. That's how many doofs there are. If the unit is doof doof, <laughs> then there are four. <laughs> he, he does have that a point, you know. David has never been invited to someone's house for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I think you stuck too many doofs in there. Go on, you do it. Doof, 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 doof. Do, 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 do. No, no, that's no, not no, 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 that's not it. You were in the show. Did you, at the end of the night, find out exactly how many doof doofs there were, or did you just leave it, we're right, you're wrong, without no Yeah, basically, of... we didn't rewind. So we don't we actually know else. right now with our eight. Well, we do, there's eight. It is well, eight. You haven't, you haven't really checked it, have you? Yeah, I have. You have checked it. But well, you didn't check I've it at the time. Because I've watched EastEnders and I know... But I've watched EastEnders, but I don't ever... I don't the... think you have. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's only three. Cos I think the fast ones at the end aren't doof doofs, they're something else. But like oh. a little... <laughs> I'm sort of with Joe. I think it's probably two to two and a half doof doofs or four to five doofs What's before the doof? nature, doof, doof, doof. The nature oh, yeah, of the it. noise changes such that it can no longer be labelled either a doof or a half Agree. doof doof. <laughs> so, yes, yes. Well, bearing that in mind and knowing your love for music, give us your rendition, then, <gasps> of the end drum. Now, I feel that would be... I, I would, I would, I'd be humiliated. Would you like me to give you a lead-in, a dramatic moment? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is Elsie, who works okay. in a laundry. Who's Elsie? She was never in She's a character that I've created. Well, what about Doc Cotton? Can we yeah. Her? You look you a bit like Doc Cotton. You do a bit. You've got... <laughs> you've definitely got... You've got Doc Cotton look. You do? You've got Are you ready? Yeah, I'm going to try it. Oh. <laughs> oh. I think that's Mick Jagger you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's happened to my laundry. It's gone somewhere. <laughs> Doof, 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 doof. All right. <laughs> um, what do you hey, think? Well, that sounds like the washing machine's broken. Yeah. <laughs> See, I think after about five minutes, I would have just gone to the, gone to the YouTube and had a little look on there. I, I think he's lying. I always like to go counterintuitive, so I'm going to say I, I think he's lying as well. Yeah. OK. I'm going to have to say lie. You're going to have to say lie. OK, Joe Lysett, truth or lie? It's a lie. Oh, <laughs> that is so sad. And 
And Joe Swash, there's a treat for you because you said you've never had a, a doof doof. We're going to yeah. give you one tonight. Whatever you want to say, yeah. something dramatic, and yeah. it's going to come in. It's going to happen. And trust you. me, it doesn't matter what you say because we're all just going to be counting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe, here we go. Is it my baby? Oh, there's nine. 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 Ten. Nine. Ten. Nine. Nine. It's nine. 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 It's nine. It's nine. There was it's nine. nine in there. It's Ooh. nine. I once spent the night in a bush in Basingstoke. <laughs> David's team. Right. That's a true. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Why were you spending the night in a bush in Basingstoke? I missed my train. Where do you live? Uh, well, at the time, I lived in Kettering in Northamptonshire, right. Rose of the Shires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why didn't you go to a luxury hotel? Well, David, uh, at the time, I had no money in my wallet at all, and my phone was dead. I had no way of contacting anyone. That certainly adds up. Why a bush? <laughs> Why not a bench or, like, yeah. somewhere warmer than, than a bush? Well... Is a, is a bench warmer than a bush? <laughs> I would say a bush is warmer than a bench. A bench is definitely colder than a bush. It's more exposed. There's an old saying, you're warmer in a bush than on a bench. <laughs> <laughs> So where was the bush? Mm. Paint the picture of the local area. It was area. right in front of the train station. And there was, like, a little, like, pick-up point for taxis and stuff. And then a, it went down a little bit to the road. And then right in front of the road was a load of bushes. So you didn't look for a long time for a particularly comfy spot? I'll level with you, David. The <laughs> amount of time it took me to decide to sleep in the bush was embarrassingly short. Right. <laughs> <laughs> was it? <laughs> Now, that does surprise me. It was a quick decision. You missed your train, and you yes. go, right, that's it. And you immediately, like, 14 seconds later, you're snoring. Well, I actually didn't get to sleep. It was scary. I, I, I was freezing, actually. Ah. Even though the bush... It was a nice, roomy bush. Can you remember the shape of the leaves? <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, small little Basingstoke leaves. Individual leaves. <laughs> yeah. Variegated? Uh, uh, OK. Yeah, you have to explain what that word means. <laughs> <laughs> it means there's sort of um, uh, there's a sort of white bit on the outside. I think I wasn't paying attention to the leaves. I had bigger problems at the time. I wasn't sitting in the bush going, one day I may have to justify this entire experience on what I like. <laughs> I better memorise the leaves and whether they're gentrified or whatever you said. <laughs> <laughs> So, James, you've settled down in the bush yes. and you're lying there, but it's cold. Oh, I'm sitting there. Sitting in the bush? Sitting there, cross-legged and cold. I had a T-shirt on. A How are you going to go to sleep sitting? <laughs> I was scared. What so I, scared I hadn't really... Oh, oh, it was Friday night in Basingstoke. There were hoodlums around. <laughs> and all you had on was a T-shirt. And jeans. And jeans, of course. Yes. yes. <laughs> I still feel like what? the bench is warmer. <laughs> So, did, did anybody hear you in the bush and, and come and At one point, they did. At one point, some hoodlums stopped outside the bush. They said, you know what we haven't done in a while? <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't beaten someone up in a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they speak, David. <laughs> Bullies speak like that to each other. And I was in the bush, and I, at the time, I was wearing a red dress. <laughs> what did you say? What? I was wearing a dress by now. What, what? Why? You said you're in a T-shirt. Originally, I was in a T-shirt, and then I had to put a dress on. <laughs> why did you put a dress on? Why? It was cold. When did you get a dress? I had it in a bag. <laughs> why? I was, I was making a short film, and I had to buy the wardrobe for the cast. You're in the bush. The hoodlums had moved on. They didn't beat you up. I tricked them. I put the bag over my head. <laughs> you seriously put the bag over your head? Yeah. Put yeah. yourself in my shoes. They're saying they want to beat someone up. If they look down and see me wearing a dress, it'll be like Christmas. <laughs> so, I put the bag over my head, and now if they look down, they'll think, Some... someone's left a bag and a dismembered body Hang on. in a bush. <laughs> <laughs> People at home, don't put bags on your heads. No, no. Let's go back yeah. to the temperature of this bush now. <laughs> you said you went into the dress for warmth, but surely the jeans and the T-shirt were warmer than a dress. There's a lot I of I don't think... I think he said he fair, put the dress on over. I don't think he took the jeans <laughs> yeah. and the T-shirt. <laughs> oh, he did. Oh, it was he did. double. Yeah, no, but he didn't slip out of the jeans and the T-shirt, <laughs> fold them up nicely at the side, and then get yeah. the dress and put it on and go, 
Oh, I look wonderful. <laughs> he wasn't doing that. Oh, he's, right. By the end of the night, he's wearing the jeans, the T-shirt, the dress oh, and, and the, the bag. bag. Oh. <laughs> Say it's lucky this didn't happen to Melvin because if so, he'd have been on a bench wearing a dress and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for a guess. Is he telling the truth, Melvin? Oh. What do you think? I think looking at James, I can believe that he could put on a dress with a bag over his jeans and t shirt, but a man that picks a bush over a bench, I can't trust. <laughs> <laughs> so, on that basis, it's a lie. Hey. I, I've got to absolutely say it's true. true. I'm believing every element, really. I'm going to go true. True. Yeah. You're saying true. Right. James, was it true or was it a lie? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>